times when you're doing an electronics enclosure, the goal of the simulation might be to understand um, how to make uh, the best use of the flow going through the enclosure, right? Um, you want to make sure that most of the flow goes through the, the veins of this heat sink, which you see uh, right over here. And uh, you want to know if the location of your fan inlet, which is this, and these uh, outlet slots are in a good position. Let's say you're trying to you're trying to find that out. You're not looking at the exact temperatures, but rather you're just looking at what can I do to improve the flow through the heat sink? Because if I do that, I know that I'll have a, a good cooling performance. And then I can pass this on to the expert analyst uh, for a more detailed evaluation of the actual temperatures that I'm getting, okay? So let's do that again. Create solution, fluid flow. In this case, I already have a generic shape which represents my enclosure, okay? And uh, I'm going to specify um, a flow velocity. Let's just say two meters per second. I just I just made that up. And I'm going to specify these um, shapes as the um, the outlet. Okay, so it's a a pressure outlet. Sorry, let me do that again. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's all I need to do. And if I click click play you'll see once again, the instantaneous stuff. You're probably gonna get sick of hearing me say instantaneous, but that's what it is, okay? So uh, as you can see, this is a transient solution. So we can wait a little bit for the, the solution to settle down. You know, you can see how the, the flow field is, uh, is developing. You can take a look at the total time that the simulation has run, the, the real time of simulation on the bottom right corner. But uh, very quickly, I can notice that most of my flow seems to be kind of going out through the top, you know? And this is, this is not really uh, uh, very good, right? I want to uh, have more flow going through the, um, the, the veins of that heat sink, okay? So let's just give this flow a second to develop. Uh, by the way, if you if you want to get more resolution or what those of you familiar with simulation may call more mesh refinement, the setting is very simple. You just have this speed versus fidelity slider. So as I move the, the slider to the right, it'll take a little bit longer to solve, but you'll get your answer. Uh, you'll be able to capture a lot more geometry detail, right? Discovery Live, as has been mentioned in previous webinars of uh, in this series, uses GPU technology from NVIDIA to be able to solve problems this quickly, right? So if you crank this fidelity slider to the right, it uses more GPU memory and resolves more geometry detail. If you move it to the left, it goes faster, but you capture less geometry. So, you know, you have to figure out what setting is the best for you, but that's pretty much the only control that you need to worry about, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this. And if I look at it from the top, I'll see that most of the flow is going out straight through the top, right? So as a design engineer, you might say, well, um, uh, you know, I want to know what I can do to improve this, okay? So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a, a block of some sort. So I'm going to create like a baffle, which is going to block the flow from going around in that direction, okay? And once again, I'm using our built-in geometry uh, tools, but you uh, certainly don't have to do that. You can use whatever CAD system you have to create these geometries, right? Now, just like before, the moment I put that in there, you can see how the flow is being blocked, right? See that? The flow is being blocked, and as a result, more more flows going through the top of this heat sink. So as a design engineer, this gives me a lot of guidance, right? Hey, I, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have my outlets here. Or if I do, maybe I need to plant an obstruction to kind of force the flow to, to turn right, you know? Now, somebody else in your, in your team might suggest something else. You know, maybe, um, they, maybe they want to, um, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Maybe they want to angle this um, this heat sink a little bit. You know, that's an interesting idea. You know, can we create a cutout like that to capture more of the flow and have it go through the middle, right? And visually, you can see this idea seems to work. So maybe a combination of having that block and having the, um, the angled um, uh, heat sink 
is a good solution for, for your particular design, right? So these are all ways we can see um, simulation being used with Discovery Live early on in the design process just to get some idea of what's going on. And of course, today we're talking only about fluid flow, but you know you can couple this with thermal, structural model, and get a comprehensive idea of the performance of your design um, using Discovery Life. Okay, so I can pause this, make it not look like a bunch of um, worms. You know, different types of post-processing ideas, right? So, for example, I can do a composite 3D rendering. You know, this is what this looks like. Um, I can change the, uh, you know, this shows the high velocity regions and you can see more clearly what's going on. You can see how more of that flow is going through here. Now I'm not getting that much flow down the bottom. Maybe I can make some design and changes to, to impact that as well. Okay. Um, now, um, some of you may, may want to know what the flow field looks like inside, but maybe you have a natural convection problem, right? You don't have forced convection. So let's see how that works, okay? So I can modify this or I can just do a new so solution and let's say fluid flow and uh, let's select this body again, okay? Now with natural natural convection, you know, I still have um, these outlets, you know, let's say open to the air in, in this example, okay? So let's specify a pressure, okay? And I have a, let's say a very hot object here, some kind of transformer maybe. And I'm gonna apply a heat flow boundary condition, maybe, um, I don't know, 100 watts or something like that. Now, all I need to do is specify gravity or the direction of gravity, okay? And uh, let me make sure it's in the right direction. So it should be in the negative X direction. You can look on the bottom left, X is in the right direction. So minus 9.81 and then zero over here and then uh, just click play, right? So as soon as I do that, let me uh, turn this on. You can see the temperature plume starting to develop, right? Here we are. So you can see um, the hot air being heated by that uh, cylindrical object, and you can see the plume rising up. Right. So if you are de uh, designing some sort of uh, um, uh, maybe enclosed device and you want to see where the hot air is likely to collect so that you can put uh, more sensitive components away from that location, this is an easy way to do it. OK. And once again, it's just instantaneous. Right. You just got to figure out where, how long you want to run the simulation, what fidelity to use, what boundary conditions to use. 